Hurricane Katrina wasn't just one of the most deadliest storms in the in U.S. history. It also exposed critical engineering failures that left New Orleans completely underwater there. Let's bring in uh, Georgia Tech professor of civil engineering, Dr. Herman Fritz. Dr. Fritz, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. If, if you had to describe the lesson learned from Katrina in one word, what would it be? Well, I think it was the engineering failures, the levee failures that ultimately caused, you know, the horrific death toll uh, from Hurricane Katrina. So we typically need uh, the water, the storm surge flooding um, in order to get into the thousands of fatalities for, for hurricanes uh, worldwide, really. But it's really the levee failures in New Orleans that ultimately made it a mega disaster. How, how did that fail? Talk to us real quickly about how did, how, how did it fail? Well, the system was, you know, was designed after Hurricane Betsy in 1965. Um, was supposed to be a 200-year hurricane uh, protection system for 200-year events that failed 40 years later. It was Congress mandated, but it failed 40 years later. Um, essentially, the levees weren't high enough, um, so they they failed once they got overtopped. And unfortunately, some levees were also poorly maintained, so some of those levees actually failed before the water overtopped, so before the design criteria were met. Um, that should actually never happen. Um, so that's an engineering failure, design failure, maintenance failure, or construction failure. Um, and the levees weren't designed resilient enough to, to sustain the overflow over the levee for an extended period of time to allow the hurricane to pass and still have an intact levee, uh, which essentially resulted in entire neighborhoods of New Orleans being submerged uh, for weeks after the event, because in contrast to all the other hurricanes you've seen in the recent years, mm -hmm. usually it's blue sky after the hurricane and the water is gone the next day, right? But, uh, but once you're below sea level, like in New Orleans, the water's not going to go away by itself. You have to pump it out. And if the levees have reached, you can't pump the water out. So you got to fill in those holes first before you can pump the water out. So how has the entire field of civil engineering changed as a result of this hurricane? Well, um, Hurricane Katrina really, really brought, you know, the storm surge, the flooding side of things uh, mm -hmm. back into the picture. Um, so the levees, you know, they have been designed more resilient. Um, but we also know that, you know, all the levees are designed to a higher standard now. They're really only designed for 100 year events now. So in contrast to what we had in 1965, lower levees, 200 year events. Now it's higher levees, 100 year events. And the Army Corps of Engineers even calls it now a hurricane risk reduction system. So I'm no longer telling you that I'm protecting you. I'm just telling you that I'm reducing your risk. Um, so it is uh, very conscious in the sense that we know that, you know, these levees can still get overtopped um, because typically, uh, and when they get overtopped, you want to make them more resilient. So the levees now, they have these concrete aprons and so forth uh, and, and designated overflow locations so that hopefully we can slowly flood the neighborhood which would still allow people to potentially evacuate on rooftops and so on and be, be picked up by helicopters later. Um, but typically engineers and politics design after the last big disaster, which in this case is Hurricane Katrina. So for example, those storm surge barriers in New Orleans East that have been put in, a giant barrier, $2 billion, uh, two miles long, essentially it's 26 feet tall. Uh, Katrina at those locations was about 23 feet, so it's about, in terms of storm surge, so it's basically adding a couple of feet of freeboard on top of that. Mm -hmm. But there are, of course, as engineers always concerns, because there are still scenarios that are not in Hurricane Katrina. For right. example, one of the things that didn't happen during, during Hurricane Katrina is the river levees of the Mississippi didn't breach. Mm -hmm. um, and that is another dangerous scenario for New Orleans, because once the levees breach, of the Mississippi River, mm -hmm. you can't turn the Mississippi off. Right, right, that's absolutely right. Uh, real quickly here, we got about uh, 40 seconds left here. If you were advising city leaders right now, what's the most important investment you tell them to make to prevent a Katrina-like storm coming again? Well, I think, you know, having, uh, being prepared uh, for future events, so, so maintaining the infrastructure that's put in place, trying to make improvements uh, wherever it makes sense based on, you know, modeling scenarios that have been run. Um, and then, of course, in terms of when it comes to saving lives, it's, it's critical to, you know, to have to raise awareness, education among the population and make people aware that, you know, uh, 
that they will have to evacuate under certain scenarios yeah. so that if people will actually heed those warnings and evacuate in time. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the places where big improvements have been made since, uh, since Hurricane Katrina. The forecasting is much better. It's easier to evacuate. It's much easier to communicate in advance of a storm uh, with, with, with uh, all the internet and social media and smartphones we have. So I think there's big improvements there, but we still have to convince the people to actually evacuate because yeah. there have been people during Hurricane Katrina that were essentially thinking, oh, well, you know, it was downgraded to Category 3 just before landfall, but it was still a huge system. And when it comes to flooding, it's really the size of the system that matters more than the uh, than the, than the exact wind speed. Yeah, um, some, people had, some people had survived Cat 5 events, and then their house got washed away during Hurricane Katrina. So I think it's very important not just listen for those numbers, right. but actually heed the warnings. And the warnings are going to be more precise. We'll even in the future have, you know, warnings that are as precise as you'll have 10 feet of water on Bourbon Street. So yeah. you will need to- Dr. Fritz, I, I'm sorry, we, we're out of time, and I, I really appreciate your insight. We, we could talk all day about it, but thanks, we gotta run. Thanks for your insight.